How's it going everyone? Today we're going to be reviewing the differences between one of the most popular paddles on the market, the Lux Control Air. Now a lot of people probably didn't even know that there are two other shapes to this paddle, but there are and they do have some significant differences. So today I'm going to be testing out the other two paddles, the S2 and the Epic, and see what the differences are and whether it would be good for certain players. Alright, let's hop into it. So just to start off, you probably have watched my review video on the Invicta shape. This is the paddle that I personally have been playing with for quite a while. Um, I did switch to the Power Air uh, about three weeks ago um, because I wanted to experiment more with uh, drives and having bigger counters. And then as I was making this review video, I uh, was testing out the Lux and I, of course, I had to test out the Invicta shape again. And it felt so buttery and I feel like every shot, every dink, every drop that I hit went exactly where I wanted and Chris Olsen was right. I'm going back to the Control Air. I absolutely love the Lux Control Air and it just, the soft game is so important guys. Like it makes a huge difference. Not to say that the Power Air is a worse paddle, but it's a paddle that you have to have much higher skill. So for 99% of players, I do think that the Lux Control Air series is going to be a much easier, forgiving, and just enjoyable paddle to play with. Okay, so let's talk about the differences between each of these three paddles. The Invicta, I believe, is the most popular shape because of the longer handle and the longer face. Now this benefits people who want a bit more reach. Um, I would say if you're a tennis player, ex-tennis player, this paddle, the Invicta, is going to be more for you because the elongated shape feels more like a tennis racket. And if you have a two-handed backhand, I highly recommend the Invicta because the Invicta allows, me, allows you to put two hands very, very comfortably. Okay, And in a second, I'm going to show you what two-hand looks like on the other paddles. So I think the Invicta is going to be better for players who want more reach, either had a tennis background, um, and just want a bit more space on the handle. And that kind of brings me to the next one is the S2. So the difference between these two shapes is the S2 is a bit more of like a square and the Epic is a little bit longer but still has a, a wider base. So if I put those side by side, you can kind of see that they look very similar, but the S2 is ever so slightly longer. I would say if you are, if you come from ping pong and you're used to a shorter handle, or you just prefer like choking up on a paddle, the S2 is probably going to feel more comfortable for you because because of the shorter handle, let's compare these two actually. Invicta right here, S2 here. Look at the difference in the handle, the handle size. It is pretty significant. It's about like a full inch. So if I show you my two hands on the S2, my, my hand is actually like falling off that end there. So it's significantly more difficult to use two hands on the S2. But I know there's quite a decent amount of players there who have come from ping pong and they prefer to choke up on the paddle. Because this, they're choking up anyways, they don't need extra length on the handle and they can maybe be a bit snappier with their uh, wrist movements coming from ping pong. So that's one note is the shorter handle. The second note is, let's take a look at the width here. The S2 shape is like, full half an inch to an inch wider than the Invicta. What this does is it makes it a bit more forgiving for players who prefer to have a wider face, um, maybe for block shots or when they're dinking. It's a bit more forgiving in terms of where you can hit laterally on your paddle. The sweet spot is a bit more square on the S2 versus on the Invicta, the sweet spot is probably a bit more oblong right over here. Okay, so my experience in hitting with the S2 was it felt super different. 
not the touch per se, like it has that buttery luxe feel, but in terms of where I'm aiming for the paddle, it feels like it's closer to my hand and it feels like a bit, I would describe as a bit duller. So this one, I felt like it had a bit more lift to it, but the, the S2, it felt like it muted it a bit more. I would recommend the S2 for players who perhaps are coming from a ping pong background and are looking for a bigger sweet spot on their paddle. The con of this is you don't have as much reach. So that is kind of the pros and cons of the S2. So as I was saying earlier, if you've been a long time Selkirk user, the S2 actually used to be this shape and the Epic used to be this shape. So they actually switched around for this series. I'm not quite sure why, but yes, the S2 is the short handle with the square face. I think it's a very good control paddle. All right, so moving on to the Epic shape. This is a very interesting shape because the handle length is actually, look at that handle length. It's actually almost just as long as the Invicta. So not that far off. So the Epic is kind of a hybrid between the Invicta and the S2. The Epic has a decent sized handle length. It's not quite as long as, as the Invicta, but here's how my hands look like on the Epic shape. A little bit of my hand is sticking out, but two hands still feel quite comfortable. One hand feels extremely comfortable. So hitting around with the Epic, I felt like the head of the paddle was a little bit heavier. When I was going for my drops and going for my dinks, the top of the paddle dragged behind just a little bit longer because I think it has a bit more mass on the top. More of the weight seems to be distributed near the top. Compared to the S2, for example, there's not as much weight near the top because it's shorter and there's less mass on the top. The Invicta has definitely the longest one, but as I'm moving this around, it doesn't have as much uh, swing weight near the top, I feel. But the S2 feels much heavier on the top side. I would say the Epic is a good paddle for players who perhaps don't want to commit to the extreme elongated shape like the Invicta, but also don't really want a short handle and a, you know, kind of a square face. So the Epic is kind of a hybrid between the S2 and the Invicta. It doesn't excel at either end, but it kind of just takes half of what's good for the Invicta and half of what's good for the S2 and combine it into one paddle. So I think this is a good paddle if you're not really sure which style you like more and you kind of want to just grab a happy middle ground. All right, so let's talk about the weight ranges of each paddle. So they're all fairly similar and I'm gonna take out my scale here to actually weigh them just to see if my play feedback was accurate to what the actual weight is. All right, so I got my weight here and let's measure the Epic. The Epic I got was 8.08 .08 ounces. So right on the middle zone of this weight range, it says on the paddle. And the Invicta shape, 7.8 to 8.1. Mine came in at 8.04. And lastly, this is the S2. The weight range says 8.1 to 8.5 ounces. And this one actually came in at 8.01 ounces. So it looks like that my intuitions were pretty spot on. The Epic was the heaviest of the paddles, just like I felt, but not by much. All right, so now I'm gonna talk a little bit more about why I'm switching back from the Power Air to the Lux. This is kind of funny because I started with the Lux, which I absolutely loved, and then I went to the Power Air, and then now I'm back to the Lux. But so here is kind of what's going on in my mind as I'm making these changes. In my opinion, trying out different paddles helps you improve in certain aspects of pickleball. For example, the first time I tried a raw carbon fiber paddle, I discovered how to spin the ball. Like I, I the feeling of the a very spinny, gritty paddle helps me to understand how to perform and do that. Playing with the Power Air, it helps me to find a better stroke and utilize power a little bit more, and it helps me to hone in more on the faster elements of the game. The Lux Paddle was a paddle that really helped me to hone in and find soft hands. Because this paddle is really soft and I can just trust this paddle to do all the resetting for me, 
I just learned that I can soften my hands, be very simple with my movements, and let the paddle do the work. So in essence, different paddles kind of helped me to highlight different things that I didn't know that I could do in pickleball. So yeah, that's just kind of what's going on in my head as I'm making these changes between paddles. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this little review. I am going back to the Lux paddles. If you haven't had a chance to hit with one yet, I highly recommend it. It is really a, a fun experience because it's, it just feels like butter. Truly, it feels like butter. You can hit as hard as you want and you could spin it as much as you want and that ball is probably staying in the court. As always guys, thanks so much for watching and supporting the channel. And if you haven't already, please hit that sub button. Let me know in the comments what paddles you like and I'll see you guys on the next one.